So the question is, why did the Magic Circle cancel my booked uh, and planned lecture in 2017? Was it, as I came at the time to the conclusion of, that it was largely due to postings by magician Paul Zenon made on the Magicians of Facebook UK, uh, also I believe on the Magic Circle private members Facebook group, and uh, also on his own profile, as screenshots that follow will show. Now, I may have thought at the time he was solely responsible, but by that I meant the main, main cause, as it were. Because as the Magic Circle's own letter to me confirmed, Paul did voice uh, his opinion that I shouldn't be booked and it should be cancelled, but that many other people did as well. The question is, was that because they were stoked up by Paul posting about my book Hypnotism and Sex and giving the impression that I hypnotise women into having sex against their will which is completely untrue and is also completely defamatory anything of that nature that I've been involved with uh, publicity wise were only publicity stunts anyway but aside from that made it clear that it was a fully consensual thing between adults fully consenting and in full knowledge at all times and not as some of the gutter press have incorrectly especially Rupert Murdoch's Sun newspaper in 1994 completely printed things that were not said by me or the lady in question who actually was a paid model friend of mine and they didn't print anything that she said they made it up and twisted things and before people go why didn't you take legal action well I couldn't at the time uh, but as it turns out uh, the 1994 article is actually because of other things that took place going to be part of my um, arguments against newsgroup newspapers that uh, were submitted and filed as a legal case on the 30th of September 2022 um, as shown at links above or below this video anyway Check out this stuff, the screenshots, and there is the footage uh, from my top magic interview with Craig Petty that uh, had to be taken out because Paul Zenon threatened legal action and threatened to get Craig's YouTube channel taken down. Well, I discussed this with Craig and said, look, everything I said is true, and I still stand by it, but if you edit it out, at least then you can put the rest of the interview up, which is still on Craig's channel, three hours of it, link above or below this video, and... Um, well, it'll shut Paul up. I'll take the heat off you, as it were. And we agreed that was the best thing to do. And now releasing it this way so that you can see what was cut out of that uh, video because I do stand by uh, everything I said. And I also made it clear in that video anyway that Paul wasn't the only voice. And I make mention of the fact that Magic Circle said there were other people as well. But he most certainly bragged about the fact that I'd been cancelled and he was happy about it, as you can see from the screenshots that follow. And in my opinion, has definitely purposely or misleadingly posted stuff in the past that's untrue, out of context. Um, and some may perceive, as I did, honestly, and I'm entitled to my own opinion, uh, in a manner that maybe was to incite um, dislike, hatred even, from others in the community. So, for the interests of clarity, I did get a letter from the Magic Circle after they'd uh, cancelled my lecture and all the hoo-ah that went on back on the 4th of July 2017, where their statement was, and I read, Dear Mr Smith, Further to the booking at the Magic Circle that was due to take place on the 19th of June 2017, your subsequent postings on various Facebook forums, your blog and Twitter account incorrectly single out Paul Zenon as being responsible for the event being cancelled. The reality is that we had a string of complaints from many distressed members by our members forum, email and telephone, as well as numerous threats from members to boycott the premises that evening. Paul Zenon did express some concern. I repeat, Paul Zenon did express some concern about the booking of your lecture, but his voice was that of many other members. The council reiterate that such postings targeting Paul Zenon in this instance are simply not true. Yours sincerely, Megan Knowles, who at the time was the secretary of the Magic Circle. Here's the thing. In regards to that letter, I categorically just repeat that they say themselves that Paul Zenon did express some concerns about the booking of your lecture, which is all I ever really said in what follows my interview with um, Craig Petty. I made it clear 
that Paul Zanon was not the only person, but that he was one of the first and that he helped stir the hornet's nest, in my opinion, based on the evidence I've seen. To discover more about the story, it's covered at the time by the Jerk's website. So if you on Google type in Jonathan Raw Magic Circle the Jerk, J-E-R-X, as you can see, click enter. And sure enough, your first entry will be that. Jonathan Royal versus the Magic Circle on the 26th of June, 2017. You click on that and the jerk goes into details about things. And he has a link there to, which you can click on. I'm just going to copy it to put it in another window. But he goes into it and you can go and see that yourself anyway as I say on the jerk's website the jerk j-e-r-x dot com forward slash blog forward slash 2017 forward slash 6 forward slash 24 forward slash jonathan hyphen royal hyphen vs hyphen the hyphen magic hyphen circle see what you make of that yourself and then uh, there's a link here which is web archive because I did take my page down because I was fed up with the uh, controversy so we just have to let that load a minute another random exchange before I was banned from magicians of Facebook UK um, where Zenon denies ever slagging off uh, anybody but he does admit to have questioning the use of CGI and stooges in TV magic shows uh, people like Dynamo uh, but you know the way I perceived it and some other people I know was that that came across as low he was slagging people off I suppose it's a, a matter of um, semantics and your definition of it. A great example of kind of tit for tat, more so childish um, trouble causing, attempting with the bit at the end of this. I mean, you can read it, but at the end, he goes, Why don't you tell us again about the time you combined the two and bullshitted about a well known Blackpool performer by writing a letter to their long term employees, slagging them off? If I remember rightly, you apparently did that on someone else's behalf. Do tell, Jonathan. Well, he already knew. He knew due to the fact that I pu published an apology, the link to which um, is on my blog and will be above or below this video. It's a personal apology to Russ Stevens. And I mentioned the whole incident and the facts behind it in my interview with Craig Petty on Talk Ma Magic, which can be watched in full at the link above or below this video. Just more trouble causing. Further in a conversation on Magicians Facebook UK, Paul Zanon trying to rake up the whole news of the world, Mazama mood, fake shake stuff, the fact that I ended up spending a bit of time in prison. Talk about childish and um, basically trying to cause trouble. Some might argue trying to incite hatred against me. When the real truth is fully explained at circusofthemind.net. And as I point out, I've already provided uh, links and evidence to Paul numerous times in the past to show that um, I'm ultimately not guilty of anything I was accused of. And um, the fact is there's an ongoing investigation by the Criminal Cases Review Commission as this is recorded on the 31st of October 2022 ready for release in December 2022 because um, I'm not going to release it till just be you know into December then um, yeah he should have already known but it's just because he wants people to start talking about it it's inciting trouble causing I would argue and is my opinion Another example of attempted trouble causing. Paul bringing up. Did you contact the pubs and the police not so long ago regarding groups of magicians you met there in order to complain about illegal hypnosis? Yes, I did, because what they were doing was illegal under the 1952 Hypnotism Act and also arguably under certain other laws. And I do talk about this in my interview with Craig Petty on Talk Magic, the link to which is above or below this. The key is I was doing nothing wrong. Later in that thread, because, uh, you know, after I'm pointing out the truth to him and giving links, he, he kind of tries to divert attention from the fact that his version isn't, isn't the full picture. But look at this. According to him, he says, just to clarify, you admit to stealing material from other performers. No, I don't. That's fully explained in the video um, that follows this. Um, 
I admitted to having modelled something, but not stealing material. Um, apparently, he says, he's saying to me, you were investigated over suspect medical practices under the auspices of your doctorate. Totally untrue. Never been investigated for any apparent alleged suspect medical practices. That's defamatory, wholly untrue, libelous, defamatory slander, whatever is the relevance to it printed. It's basically just not true. And as for any doctorates I've got, they're all fully legal, honoris causas, religious degrees, which entitle me to use the term doctor. But doctor anyway, in the context I use it, as explained on my uh, career resume, the link to which is below or above this video, is not a protected title in England and anyone can use it in the manner that I uh, do. It then says you refer to fellow Facebook magicians as pricks. Well, I do. The ones that act like pricks get called pricks. The vast majority are okay. And you report social gatherings of magicians to the police for using illegal hypnosis. Only when they're using illegal hypnosis. Now you threaten to report me to the police and then you post in a thread participating about how important it is to support fellow magicians. Yeah, support fellow magicians who are not breaking the law, who are not slagging other people off, who are not telling lies and trying to incite trouble by... Um, Claiming news of the world and Mazamu mood related things are something that they're not, for example. Failed threats then here. Um, as for me hiding behind friends, I'll meet you face to face any time and my views won't be any different. We'll see how brave you are with your insults when you're not at the far end of a keyboard. Um, I've seen Paul several times at Blackpool Magic Convention since this and he's not said a word. He's looked at me sheepishly. He's given me uh, looks of... Well, funny facial expressions. Spent hours in the Blackpool Magic Convention auction 2022 uh, with him in the same room. He didn't once approach me. He didn't say a word to me. He just gave me funny faces and looks. Now, in fairness, much later, he, he says, you know, it's not about him, Dynamo. It's not about him personally. It's about using digital editing effects and stooges. Well, you decide for yourself. It comes across, and it certainly did to people in that thread. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't have to respond like that as though it came across to them that he was slagging off Dynamo. Whether he was or he wasn't isn't really the point. It's how it came across to the average man on the street. Just to be clear, in another thread where Zanon accuses me of uh, accusing him of being a liar without foundation, uh, although, you know, I've only ever made such comments or implications when stuff that's untrue, defamatory, out of context or distorted has been posted, uh, he ends up by making it clear that he's blocked me, which he has. So to be clear, it's not me that's blocked tons of people. You block me, Paul. But back to the magic circle briefly. Look at that. Glad to hear that the scheduled lecture by Dr. Jonathan Royal, Stroke, Alex Leroy, Alex William Smith, Ford, Alex Alexander, Ford Tarquin, Fintim, Limbim, Wimble, whatever, bus stop for Tang for Tang, only biscuit barrel at the magic circle headquarters next month has been cancelled due to popular demand, which he posted on, I believe, his profile. I don't know because I was blocked. I got sent the screenshots uh, and definitely in a magic group causing people to start liking. This was early on, but it ended up with hundreds of people, possibly thousands seeing it. Um, to me, that illustrates someone who is so glad they got what they wanted. Me cancelled. That's how I perceived it, my personal opinion. And I explain more about that in the video. Now, the Magic Circle say it wasn't just Paul Zenon, fair enough, but I do know that he posted in the Magic Circle members group, or at least I'm led to believe by the person who booked me, um, well, didn't book me, liaised with me, um, that there was a posting made in there that ultimately got deleted um, initially, and I was alerted about before I was ever cancelled. And there were certainly postings made in various places before I was cancelled, that some may perceive, as I did, were with some sort of intention to incite other Magic Circle members to complain. But all we can be sure of is that Paul Zenon was one of the voices, as confirmed by the Magic Circle, and as I clarify more in the video that follows. So now what follows is the section, the main bit that was cut out of my first ever interview with Craig Petty for his Talk Magic TV 
podcast station and YouTube channel uh, where I mentioned Paul Zenon. It was up for about 24 hours originally with this material included, but then Paul made legal threats that frankly were unfounded because I believe those threats were that I would supposedly he'd get Craig's channel taken down, the video wasn't removed. Um, the easiest thing to do, which I discussed with Craig and gave him my full blessing, full understanding that it was just easier to cut out any mention at the time of Paul Zenon from his channel, so his channel wasn't at risk. That's why I'm now releasing in December 2022 uh, the bits that were missing that were pulled out because as hopefully what you've seen from the images before this and the stuff located at the links above or below this video everything I say is true and there's more than enough screenshots and evidence to show that things that Paul posted in the past were either out of context uh, distorted heavily completely untrue in some cases or he may have genuinely thought certain things to be true but then I drew his attention to places like circusofthemind.net where the full truth is about my fake shake and news of the world experiences and whatnot and yet he seems to have chosen to ignore them. So yeah, here's what was cut out of my first ever Talk Magic interview with uh, Craig Petty. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock, which means it's time for a talk magic. And this is less of a talk magic and more of a talk hypnotism because the person I have in front of me today is one of the top uh, practitioners. Is that the word? One of the top uh, hypnotism performers, uh, but also has had a huge career, both as a magician, a mentalist, a hypnotist. He's very well known in the magic community. He is considered one of the most controversial characters in the magic community. And that's coming from me, who has also been considered quite controversial through the years. I have nothing on this guy. Uh, he has had an incredible career. If you saw the interview I did recently with uh, Rob Temple, um, who everybody raved about that interview. Well, Rob is actually a student of the gentleman I have here with me today. And unlike a lot of the interviews, I have no idea where this is going to go. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I have been super excited about doing this interview for a long time. So it's time to introduce on Magic TV, on Talk Magic, the one and only Jonathan Royal. How are you doing, man? You okay? I'm good and well. Um, even makes me want to watch the interview. And by the way, that is, I can't remember the last time I got called a gentleman. So thank you for that. Yeah. You're more, than welcome. You're more than welcome. But it's true. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me to do this interview, especially after Rob's interview, because in Rob's interview, which I know you watched, he, mm -hmm. um, he referenced you many, many times throughout the interview as a, as a big kind of source of inspiration and reason why he had got to the point where he has. But, you know, outside of that, you have had an incredible career. You know, you've been, you're very knowledgeable. And uh, for some reason, you've had quite a lot of controversy surround you in so many different aspects of the career that you've had. Now, we've known each other for a long time. We've, um, and, and I've been aware of you, but this is going to be a really interesting interview for me because I'm not even aware. I, I try to stay away from a lot of the controversy unless I'm creating it. So it's going to be really interesting to kind of get to the bottom of everything and find out everything. And I know you said to me earlier, no questions are off the table. I can ask anything that Precisely. I want. Precisely. Yeah, I have nothing to hide um, because, you know, that's the thing. When, when you consistently tell the truth, it doesn't matter if people want to backstab you. The only way they can then go and backstab you is to make things up. Um, yeah. And people can either then choose to believe it or not, but hopefully intelligent individuals will go away and these days it's easier than ever, do a tiny bit of research and discover whether it's what I've said for years that's true or whether what some rumour monger posting anonymously most of the time, facelessly, not having the balls to do it, there's a few exceptions to that. Um, and if I, I, I'm just going to ask up front out of respect, if at any point it becomes relevant during the interview, um, as long as I make this disclaimer right now, I take full legal responsibility if I should mention anybody's names. Um, having said that, is it okay if I mention names? 
Yeah, by all means. I mean, this is your okay. interview. I so don't... in which case, you know, the exception to the rule is people like Paul Zenon, who, you know, all, all respect to him on a few levels. One, um, he's an excellent performer. Um, bloody hell, if you were at Blackpool um, this year, I'm not wanting to take anything away from any of the other performers, but he, as the compare of one of the guys, he stole the show. Um, yeah. Okay, so I just well, want to make I, that clear. I've always been a big fan of his style and the way he performs, and and you know I've seen him perform on stage many many times. He's very very good. Very. very so you know, performance wise, boom, excellent. I can't say anything but good. Um, in terms of his relationship to uh, truth, reality, and facts, and the way he wishes to portray certain things, if you were to believe. Uh, Paul Zenon, for example, we'll shut this in at the beginning. Um, I stole tons of material off him, um, which the truth of that is, when he goes posting that around the internet, is I once said to him, admitted to him, kind of thing, and I felt guilty that I was doing a show once with Jimmy Cricket, uh, the comedian, and um, one of the support acts, uh, one of the props malfunctioned, and I was asked if I could do a bit of extra time to fill in. And I, I literally didn't really have anything in the way of additional props with me because that was never going to be an issue. It wasn't a, a thing I'd planned for that day. And I looked around and I suddenly saw in the dressing room, uh, there was a microphone on the side. It clearly belonged to this, like it was like a working men's club style venue. And I thought, <laughs> this is kind of, I, I won't get arrested for this because I did tell the person who uh, owned the venue afterwards what, what I'd done and offered to pay for the microphone. But I thought, microphone wire, it's the same as the mic wire that's out the front. So I literally <laughs> cut some of it off, got some elastic, and made up a gimmick so that I could do the cut and restore microphone wire. And needless to say, I did the obligatory licking the fingers, putting it on, you can hear me, and then you can't and whatnot, which in my head at that time, I thought I was uh, in what they call NLP, they would say modeling, but layman's term is copying, or some might say stealing, uh, the presentation that um, I'd previously seen Paul do. Um, and I actually admitted to the, in black and white, in a Facebook message exchange with, with Paul, uh, that I'd done this, and I said, I just want to let you know kind of thing, I'm sorry, but it was like pulling me out of shit, I will never normally, it's not going in the act, it was a one-off, I'm just letting you know, in case, you know, you're working with Jimmy, and he mentions that I did, I was make. I was trying to avoid an issue before it ever became an issue, and, uh, oh, lo and behold, for, it took total humbridge um, at that, because then he came back and he went, well, that's not the only thing you've stolen. And I went, what, what, what? He said, well, you've stolen my catchphrase. What? He said, well, um, I, I, I quite often say life in the bus lane and you filmed a TV series in Amsterdam in um, two, 2000, 2001, I think it was off the top of my head. It's on my website anyway. People can watch it for free now because I've got the rights back on it. Um, and he said, you clearly stole that off me. And I said, well, no, actually. Um, my Uncle Jim, as in on my dad's side of the family, was a bus driver for Great Manchester Buses for years. And if you go on Amazon, you'll see there, 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 there are books that called Life in the Bus Lane. It's tales of Greater Manchester bus folk. Um, that's actually where it came from. And they used to say it as, in the sense of, it's a sarcastic saying. Now, since then, in fairness, I have been shown and, well, saw at Blackpool. He actually said it a couple of times uh, at Blackpool. And it was used exactly in that context of um, almost sarcasm. Uh, but the point is, and I, I made it clear to Paul to his, uh, you know, uh, directly, um, although he's now blocked me on all social media uh, accounts, but um, I never directly stole that off him and it actually wasn't my decision to call the tv series in amsterdam life in a bus lane anyway it was the television production companies um not mine but for some reason he decided in a vindictive manner to 
I'm, I must every opportunity to bring this up, not least of which was when I was booked to lecture at the uh, Magic Circle in London, sharing my original magic and mentalism ideas, not a hypnosis lecture, I mean, magic and mentalism stuff. And um, Paul started up a thread on a uh, Facebook magic forum. The moment the advert came out saying I was going to be there going, um, basically, who booked this Michael Hunt? And um, regurgitating that he's stolen my act in the past and putting the twist on it. And well, subsequently, he managed to then, having brought up the subject of a book that I brought out in 1993 called Hypnotism and Sex, subtitled How to Get Laid 365 Times a Year which has got a very controversial title, yes. And the way it was marketed was this impression that you could hypnotise women into bed. But the truth is, if you actually get the book and read it, it is purely a book on body language, doing things like opening doors for women, walking on the outside of a pavement, letting them walk on the tried, tested and true relationship enhancing techniques that's likely to make you more desirable to the opposite or same sex if, if that's your thing but with a sensationalized title it does not teach you to go out and psychologically or physically or in any other manner do anything illegal immoral or unethical despite the way it may have been portrayed and marketed by some of the mainstream tabloid media in the early 90s, which it was around the world. It was portrayed in that way, which were great for sales, but um, somebody who's been in the show business as long as Paul has should know that not everything you read in the tabloid media is true. They quite often blow things out of proportion. Mm -hmm. And there is absolutely no way that he has read that book because if he had then that would make him a blatant liar which i'm not accusing him of so there's no way he's read that book based on his comments because if any of his comments were along the lines of this book is about making people do things against their will and it most certainly never was and it isn't but it kicked up enough of a stink that loads of um lady members of the magic circle um who also hadn't read the book were just believing the title or the publicity that still got residue on the internet um enough of them complained that ultimately my uh, lecture got cancelled thanks to the fire that was started by paul zenon it's all very sad really because i still i still having told that story um want to publicly say paul sees this I'm sorry if you think that life in the bus lane as a title was stolen by me from you. But you know what? My uncle was saying it probably before you ever were involved in show business, as were dozens, if not hundreds, of Greater Manchester bus drivers. Uh, it wasn't me who chose it as the title of the series anyway. It was the production company. And in reference to the cut and restore might lead, the times you've kicked off about that. And then the irony of it is I found out later, a law in my head, the reason I contacted you, having done the show with Jimmy, was to be honest and upfront, if you bump into Jimmy and he says, I've done this, and he recognises it from your act, it was a one-off, I don't intend to do it again. But then, lo and behold, after you've slagged me off on the internet about it, I then get brought to my attention video footage of David Nixon doing a cut and restored boom might lead on his black and white television show um doing the exact same touching can be heard take fingers off can't be heard so if i did nick that routine from you that day i nicked the routine off you that you nicked off david nixon make it that what you will sorry i went off on one there that's all right, mate. That's okay. Um, like I said, this is going to be controversial, and that's what I expected, and that's absolutely fine. Um, how long ago did the Magic Circle thing happen? When were you um, going to electric the Magic Circle? I will, because I've got my phone here. and there are, I, 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 I've now deleted my blog that I did on that, but the records of it are still on Web Archive. And I mention that because anyone who wants to go on the Jerks website, um, the jerk dot com he did an article at the time 
about the fact the Magic Circle uh, had booked me and then cancelled me. And he did that article on the 26th of June, 2017. So I was meant to be there around June, July or August time, 2017. So five years ago now. Okay, okay. So have you spoken to Paul since then? Have you? No, I saw, I saw him um, staring at me and giving me the evils for um, about eight hours of the duration of the Blackpool Magic Convention auction. We were sat in the same room and he did keep walking past me and giving me an evil stare, but he didn't say a single word to me. Um, as I've already said, life in a bus lane covered it. That, I, I, I can't see how you can justify that. I stole it off you now that I know what I know, which I didn't know at the time when I contacted you. Uh, but in any event, I'm sorry, if there's something else I've done that I don't know about. I'm sorry. Um, so all, all, all very bizarre and life's too short. You know, I'm, I've, I turned 47 on the 13th of August, just gone. And come this November, uh, to be precise, will I'll be then entering my 45th year as a performer in show business, professional, getting paid. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting too, too old for all this controversy and arguments and such like you know it's 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 and when I saw you in Blackpool I mentioned coming up uh, or, or just having happened I don't know when this ends up going out but Magic Scene um, I believe it's going to be edition 106 um, are doing an article and it's I, well, the working title's Almost a Magician. And the reason for that being is my, my dream as a kid, like many people, from the first time I saw magic, was to be a full-time professional magician. And yet, you know what? I sit here speaking to you today, and I'm so glad that I do. And hopefully this marks a, a turning point where that dream might start to work in the right direction again, because I never had any desire to be a full-time professional stage hypnotist or hypnotherapist. It was never, it was never meant to be on the agenda. Life just took a crazy, I mean, in truth, if I'd have followed my family's path, I should by rights be traveling with the circus where I was born and I should still be performing as Black the Clown. So, you know, even from an early age, I kind of, well, let's let's talk Deviated. about that early age. I want to talk mm. about that. So, you've been involved in magic and show business for a very long time. Tell us where that all came about. So, you were born into a showbiz family, right? Yeah, I mean, I I didn't have a choice at the early age. I was born. My mum and dad were travelling with Gandhi Circus here in England. Um, the week that I was due, the show was going to be in. Um, Wales, no offence to Lloyd or Lloyd Barnes or anyone else from Wales, but my dad didn't want me to end up being Welsh. So he drove me over to um, Cosford, where my grandparents were living, and I ended up getting born on RAF, uh, the RAF base in Cosford. And then taken back to the circus who were in Wales a couple of days later, because he literally just wanted to avoid me being born Welsh. Um, madness. And so just as a thought, just because I won't want Paul wasting money or time, statute of limitations, defamation, within one year, a claimant must commence a claim for defamation within one year from the date on which the cause of action accrues, namely the date on which the defamatory statement is first published. Well, as the screenshots I've got on file show, it's, well, the Magic Circle stuff's back in 2017. That's like over five years ago now. Or to put it another way, if you truly had thought that I'd publish lies about you, which I never did, Paul, could the screenshot show that my personal opinion and average man on the street could quite easily be construed that you posted stuff that was, at the very least, out of context and misleading. For example, stuff like the News of the World implying that I was lying about things when I wasn't. The full truth is at circusofthemind.net. And there's other links above or below this video that give more info on the Magic Circle lecture, my career resume to date. 
uh, my doctorate title's been fully legal, the fact that I've never been investigated for medical dubious practices, that is something that in itself was wholly defamatory. But I chose not to waste my time or money, because you know how expensive defamation cases are, on you at the time, Paul, I let it go. Um, but then you continue to make out that I'm some kind of bullshitter. Um, my story as outlined, I stand by fully, which is in this video and at the links. Um, yeah. Simple as that. The clock ticked away ages ago. Oh, and yeah, check out circusofthemind.net because I am currently um, got legal action against news group newspapers. I really have. The link's above or below this video. So please, when that's concluded, I'll be in a, a, a position that, well, I will be more likely then to take legal action against other people if they should continue to post untrue or defamatory content on the internet about me when they could have gone to circusofthemind.net and the other links that are above or below this video and learn the truth with links to evidence and facts.